हेलो एंड नमस्कार वेलकम टू द एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर डेटेड मार्च सिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल्स विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन दीज आर्टिकल्स हैव बीन टेकन फ्रॉम द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एंड दे आर गोइंग टू बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर द सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन एंड दैट इज वाई वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज दैम इन वेरी डिटेल लेट्स नाउ स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल Now this particular newspaper article talks about the Rajasthan as well as the Great Indian Bustard, right? Now why is this article important? Because um, Great Indian Bustard is critically endangered, and that is why it is important for the GS Paper Three, that is Conservation, Environmental Pollution and Degradation, Environmental Impact Assessment, and it is also important for the Prelim section, that is the Environment section. Let's first understand the context of it, and then we will talk about the problem as well as we will talk. We will talk about what exactly is this Great Indian Bustard. So now, in a move that helps the solar power projects in Rajasthan, but may hinder efforts to make the region safe for a great endangered Great Indian Bustard, the Central Electricity Authority has proposed the that only la power lines below 33 kilowatt need to go underground, and the rest to be fitted with the bird diverters. Now this becomes a big problem for the Great Indian Bustard, right? Because The Great Indian Bustard died due to striking with the high transmission power lines. Now, conservationists have objected to the move as they say it could lead to extinction of the bird. And the proposal was part of the draft regulation issued on February one and open to public comment until the March third. So it has been closed now for the public comment as well. Now it came. against the background of an ongoing case involving the threat to the bustard and other birds from power lines now high tension power lines in rajasthan and gujarat from the power plants often lie on the path flight paths of the birds and they strike with them and they get killed in that particular process now the matter is of particular concern to the future of the bustard as fewer than 150 of them remain and existing conservation methods fall short of replenishing their numbers right so what exactly is this great indian bustard great indian bustard is the state bird of rajasthan and it is considered india's most critically endangered bird and it is considered the flagship grassland species representing the health of the grassland ecology now if their numbers are declining if the numbers of the great indian bustard are declining that means that the that the health of the grassland ecology is is declining in india now its population the population of great indian bustard is confined mostly to the sorry confined mostly to the rajasthan and gujarat now small populations also occur in the maharashtra karnataka and andhra pradesh but they are not very significant the majority of the population lies in the rajasthan and gujarat now the bird is under constant threat due to colli collision electrocution with power transmission lines and it is also uh it is also getting getting critically endangered because of the hunting still prevalent in pakistan and habitat loss and alteration is also as a result of widespread agricultural expansion is also the main reason why great indian bustard is getting to the level of the extinction they are just 150 in number right so now what exactly is the protection status so they come under the critically endangered status under the iucn red list they come under the appendix x appendix 1 of the sites that is the convention of on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora they come under the convention on uh, they come under the appendix 1 of the conservation on migratory species and they get schedule one protection under the wildlife protection act 1972 of india so this is the protection status of the great indian bustard but what exactly are we doing to protect this particular species so india has launched what is known as integrated development of wildlife habitats under the ministry of environment forest and climate change which is responsible for the speedy recovery of this particular species now moefcc has also launched a program called the habitat improvement and conservation breeding of great indian bustard it is basically an integrated approach and the objective of this particular program is to build up a captive population of great indian bustard and to release the chicks in the wild for increasing the population you are basically breeding it in the domestic yards and then you are releasing them into the wild because they are not surviving in the wild 
Now, Rajasthan government is also pretty proactive in popula uh, in increasing the population of the Great Indian Bustard. So, they have launched the project Great Indian Bustard and whose aim is to construct breeding enclosures for the species and develop infrastructure to reduce human pressure on its habitats, right? So, these are some of the government initiatives which have been taken by the Great Indian Bustard and only time will tell whether these particular initiatives are fruitful or not. So, this is it regarding this particular newspaper article. Let's now head to the next important newspaper article. Now, this particular newspaper article talks about the high seas and how we can protect it. So, there is a new treaty which is being signed or it is under the pipeline or is in the pipeline in the United Nations. We are going to talk about it. Now, why is this particular newspaper article important? It is important for the GS paper too. That is bilateral, regional and global groupings and agreements involving India or affecting India's interest, right? So now, for the first time, United Nations members have agreed on a unified treaty to protect biodiversity in the high seas. And the treatment agreement concluded two weeks of talks in New York and an updated framework to protect marine life. In the regions outside the national boundary waters known as the high seas had been in discussion for more than 20 years, but previous efforts to reach an agreement had re repeatedly been installed. But now it seems that this particular treaty will come up. Now, the unified treaty which applies to nearly half the planet's surface was reached late Saturday and this particular treaty seeks to create a new body which is going to manage conservation of ocean life and it is also going to establish marine protected areas in the high seas. Now, according to Ms. Clark who is uh, related to this particular treaty said that it is critical to achieve the United Nations Biodiversity Framework's pledge to protect 30% of the planet's waters as well as its land for the conservation. Now, the treaty also establishes ground rules for conducting environmental impact assessments for uh, commercial activities in the oceans. Now, this treaty will help to knit together the different regional treaties to be able to address the threats and the concerns across the species ranges right so now this particular uh, treaty is very very important because it talks about the high seas high seas are the seas which are outside the jurisdiction of any of the countries no country can protect it and that is why the protection needs to be coming from the united nations and that is why this particular treaty is going to be implemented in the future time right so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article it is a very important treaty and let's now head to the next important newspaper article now this particular newspaper article talks about the defense spending increase by the chinese now this becomes very important for us because india and china are always fighting in the borders and that is why it is important for the GS paper too that is effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries on India's interest and it is also important for the India and its neighborhood relations that is part of the international relations right or GS paper too. So now let's understand this particular newspaper article. Now China's government on Sunday announced a hike in its defense spending by 7.2% to $225 billion in 2023, saying the rise was needed to deal with the complex security challenges. Now this also comes amidst the fact that the growth rate is somewhat lessening in India or it is slowing sorry it is slowing in China so now Beijing also announced a lower than expected growth rate of around 5% for the year as the National People's Congress or Parliament convened for its annual session in the capital right so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article not very important newspaper article but you need to keep a tab on China right always you need to keep a tab on China now its defense spending is increasing we will see how India reacts to it whether it increases the defense spending so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article let's now head to the next important newspaper article now this particular newspaper article talks about a very important issue between Sri Lanka and China, sorry, Sri Lanka and India, that is the fisherman issue. We are going to talk about the fisherman issue and what is going on right now. What are the policies which are formulating right now regarding the fisherman issue in order to decrease this particular tension between the two countries. Now, this article becomes important for the GS paper 2 that is India and its neighborhood relations. Let's first understand the context of it and then we will talk about in detail about the fisherman issue. Now, Sri Lanka's northern fishermen 
on sunday said they fiercely oppose the government's plan to issue licenses to the indian fishermen to enter sri lanka water sri lankan waters terming the move a serious setback to their nearly 15 year long struggle so what is happens is that indian fishermen sometimes do venture into the sri lankan waters because sri lankan waters have a large variety of or they have a very high variety of the fishes uh, and that is why they venture into it and they get caught in that particular regard right they get caught by the sri lankan navy and now the sri lanka says that if you are coming of the if the indian fishermen are coming to sri lanka why not create the licenses for them to venture into our seas and we get the share of profit from that as well now the sri lankan fishermen says that say that this particular move is a serious setback to the 15 year old long struggle which is going among the between the indian fishermen and the sri lankan fishermen so on february 22 foreign minister ali sabri of sri lanka told the parliament that authorities were looking into possibly issuing licenses to Indian fishermen as part of Sri Lanka's effort to find a solution to long persisting fisheries conflict through cordial bilateral talks. Now this particular move is going to benefit India but does this particular struggle by the Sri Lankans uh, accrue to something else? We don't know but we need to understand what exactly is this fisherman issue. What is this fisherman issue? To understand the fisherman issue, we have to get back to the background of it. So both Indian and Sri Lankan fishermen have been fishing in the Pulk Bay area for the centuries. And the Pulk Bay is a semi-enclosed shallow water body between the southeast coast of India and Sri Lanka. And now the problem emerged only after the maritime agreement was signed by Ch India and Sri Lanka in 1974. And in 1976, through an exchange of letters, letters, both India and Sri Lanka agreed to stop fishing in each other's waters. Earlier, what used to they used to do? They used to fish in each other's waters. Now, with the coming up of this particular treaties, maritime treaties, it became very uh, very much devastating for this economy all right so in 1974 and 1976 treaties were signed between the two countries to demarcate the international maritime boundary line now the treaties also ended up making the pulk state connecting india and sri lanka a two nation pond under the relevant united nations convention on the law of seas that is un clause rules to the exclusion of the of all third nations now simply put the bilateral agreement bans international fishing and shipping right and now the fishermen do have to venture into this uh, into the seas and this particular boundary or international maritime boundary line is imaginary so indian fishermen do venture into the sri lankan fish, uh, sri lankan waters and sri lankan fishermen do venture into the indian waters right so the Agreement could not stop the fishermen from fishing in these waters as fishermen know no boundary. And despite the signing of the maritime boundary agreements, the fishermen communities of both the countries continued their fishing in the Pulk Bay area peacefully until the Elam War broke out in 1983. Now, this particular war uh, ended in the 2009 and the Sri Lankan fishermen have been raising their objection to the Indian fisher fishermen fishing in their waters and later India and Sri Lanka agreed to set up a joint working group on fisheries in 2016 between India and Sri Lanka as the mechanism to help find a permanent solution to the fishermen issue. But now also the fishermen issue has not been solved. So what are the reasons for the contention? So the main problem with the Indian fishermen is that a large number of them are dependent on fishing waters in the Sri Lankan waters which is prohibited by the 1976 maritime boundary agreement and they are caught by the Sri Lankan navy from time to time and also a large number of Indian fishermen are dependent on trawling which is banned in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan fishermen do have small boats compared to Indian fishermen who have big trawlers right so this is the main problem right and this is the main reason for the continuation of these particular issues now what are the initiatives which the Sri Lankan and the Indian government have taken so the IMBL is imaginary right but it was geotagged and is visible to the fishermen due to the global positioning system sets 
and if we talk about the schemes then they, we have the deep sea fishing scheme so it was promoted as an alternative to bottom trawling by the Tamil Nadu fishermen of the Palk Bay now the scheme envisages the provision of 2000 deep sea fishing boats in place of trawlers by 2019 to 2020 which will be the third and the final year of implementation of this particular scheme now it aims to put an end to the disputes arising between the two countries it has been taken up under the blue revolution scheme so these are the initiatives which have been taken by the indian government in order to end this particular contention between the indian and the sri lankan fishermen right so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article and this is it for the day thank you from my side do like and share the video and subscribe to this channel have a good day bye